What's up, man? What's going on, dude? Uh, nothing much. Uh, gonna get, gonna get in some crazy shit here with this uh, this little fella, James Warren Jones. Um, mm. Some people may know him. A lot of people may not know him. But uh, this is pretty much the um, uh, what's the word? Uh, the origin of don't drink the Kool Aid or I'm drinking the Kool Aid. You know that's what's uh, that's pretty much that's a figure of speech uh, that was developed from here. Um, yeah, this this episode is going to get a little intense, guys. So uh, listener uh, discretion is advised. Um, we're going to talk about the Jonestown Massacre. And uh, a lot of it, it can get pretty uh, pretty graphic. Pretty graphic. Um, there are going to be a lot of mentions of religion and politics in this. This is just as the story is presented. This doesn't reflect either of our um, beliefs. Views. Yeah. I guess views or beliefs. So we're just reading it as is. Mm -hmm. So... I guess we could get rolling on Miss uh, James Jones. Uh, well, Randy, you want to hit the summary? Would you like me to? You're good. You, yeah, go ahead. All right. So James Warren Jones, he was born on May 13th, 1931, and died November 18th, 1978. He was an American cult leader and mass murderer who led the People's Temple between 1955 and 1978. In what he termed a revolutionary suicide, Jones and the member of his inner circle planned and orchestrated a mass murder suicide in his remote jungle commune at Jonestown, Guyana, in on November 18, 1978. Jones and the events that occurred at Jonestown have had a defining influence on society's perception of cults. Yeah, no shit. Yeah, not a good thing. If um you guys aren't sure who Jim, um, Jim, James, James Jones, Jim Jones is. I'm sure you've seen figures in pop culture of the priest with the sunglasses and the big black comb over hair. Um, he's been in a lot of a uh, whole bunch of, mm, I want to say pop, pop culture. Um, they had a movie that came out a little while ago called The Sacrament. Did you ever see that, dude? That's is that the Leonardo DiCaprio? No, 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 no. It's I don't know who. So, so I know, I know. A few years back, Leonardo DiCaprio was uh, involved in some kind of um, movie. Like they're gonna try to do a movie, and he yeah. was gonna be Jim Jones. Um, I, I'm not a hundred percent sure if that followed through. That might have been around COVID time, so it, it might have. Got kink. I think you're right. I remember. I remember. But I do remember that being um, talks up. about it. Um, I mean, like like Ryan said, we you might not know him, but you know of him and what he's done. Um, there's been tons of pop culture, different types of movies. I mean, Family Guy's hit on it, right? About drinking mm -hmm. the Kool Aid and all that crap. But you know, there's tons and tons of movies shows whatever you want to call it that has involved this kind of situation and yeah uh, like i said you might not know we are going to inform you on what happened and how yeah. messed up this whole entire thing was yeah it was uh it's crazy after doing this and looking into what this guy has done like dude i've been saying it i've been hearing it i am no um uh, what's the word? I am no prude. I make like a lot of freaking jokes on a lot and certain certain things that a lot of people would find inappropriate. And uh, like, and now after like reading on this guy and everything that had happened, now every time I hear like, oh, I, you know, I'm drinking the Kool Aid, like when they're talking about sports teams or mm -hmm. how whatever you're in, I'm like, ooh, ooh, like <laughs> you know, yeah. I was. I Makes you like, think damn. a little bit, right? Yeah. yeah you yeah, know, everyone, now. especially with the Lions, right? You drinking the Kool-Aid yet? You're like, oh, yeah. man, I think I am. But now, now you got the, a good idea of what drinking the Kool-Aid means. You're like, man, no, I'm not going to drink that Kool-Aid, yeah. dude. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. what are you talking about? Like, yeah. Like, can we go another route? But then again, <laughs> I mean, um, yeah, we'll just get into it. Yeah, well, yeah. I, <laughs> let's, let's just discuss it because yeah. it's messed up. 
But yeah, we might as well start like where where he had come from. Um, he was born in 1931, dude. He is like the classic story of a troubled individual growing up. Oh yeah, up. he he but grew up up absolutely poor. Poor, his parents uh, were well. Yeah, he grew up poor, but um, he was neglected. His, uh, a lot of biographers said that his mom had like zero maternal mm. instincts uh, and frequently just often neglected uh, Jim. Yeah. And uh, when he started to attend school, his extended family actually threatened to cut off their financial assistance to the mom um, unless she would go get a job or uh, they would force her to work outside her home. And um, Jones's father was often hospitalized constantly due to like many, many, many uh, illnesses. Mm-hmm. So you have this kid. He has no no support from anyone within his home, which is already, that's a recipe for disaster. So as he got older, uh, he started attending services at some of the churches. Um, He would go to multiple churches each week. He got baptized at several Mm. of them. And so it's clearly he's finding something that is, I don't want to, like a coping mechanism. Um, And he developed a desire to become a preacher yeah. Um, as a child, and he began to practice preaching in private. So Yeah. I was going to bring something up in that uh, go ahead. aspect. They, um, I watched many interviews and bi- biographies and whatnot and documentaries. Um, they had um, people who lived around him when growing up, saying like when he was a young child, that he used to find dead animals and give them like burials. Like, actually sit over them, recite literature and all this, and then bury them. And uh, at one point in time, uh, I guess one of the kids uh, that I was watching on this uh, documentary, he was saying that he would catch, like, cats and kill them. And oh, then man. put them, like, like bury them. So he, he's, like, ran out of things to bury. So he's like, well, I got to create stuff to bury. And this, this guy was saying, like, he was fascinated by death. You yeah. Know? And You've it's weird because... Yeah, for sure. For but it's weird because... We're, I'll, we'll get into it more, but... I think his intentions were on the right track in the beginning. Like he sure, wanted maybe. To, he wanted to create a... An organization, and it sounds like sounds fucking weird saying it like that, but they wanted to create somewhere where there was no race, there was no, um, you know, everyone's equal. You know, it's it's yeah. just they can come together and just be loved, right? And then yeah. again, it kind of went off the beaten path and just did a couple barrel rolls and yeah, but yeah, I got I got something on that when we get into this later. Yeah, you're absolutely right though, but uh. Dude, he was. He, they said he was a weird ass kid. Obviously, he's out there killing animals yeah. and cats. Yeah. Uh, he, but then he started having like claiming he had like unique abilities. Mm-hmm. Like he, he tried to ju- tried to jump off of a building, and uh, claiming that he could fly, and yeah. it didn't work. Obviously, otherwise we'd be living in a totally different world right now. <laughs> and he and he broke his arm. And uh, but he still persisted in saying that he had special abilities despite that he fell. So he failed, he obviously fell, but I was, you know, it it, it was he was still pushing and pushing and pushing, conditioning other people, um, to to believe that. And I guess other times, like he would he would put other kids in life threatening situations like this and just tell them, like, you're being guided by the angel of death. And do you imagine being like that little type of kid, 10 years old and some kids randomly that crap off? Yeah. It's like, what? Dude, I couldn't (laughs) imagine my daughters coming and telling me like, Hey, there's this kid saying yada, 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 you know, dude, I would be, no, you're not going to school tomorrow. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yep. But, uh, yeah, there was one time, dude, he would, he was a troublemaker too. He would do a lot of sacrilegious um, pranks in the churches. Um, he claimed that he had stolen a Pentecostal minister's Bible and had covered it with cower manure. 
cower, cow manure. I'm not sure what a cower is. Yeah, yeah. And also <laughs> asserted he uh, su- substituted a cup of his own urine for the holy water. Oh, dude. In the Catholic Church. So this guy, kid, this kid had some issues. Um, wow. But then this is where things get really really nerve I would I would have gotten really nervous. So he started as he got older he got more interested in like social doctrines. Mm-hmm. And he became a reader on listen to these names now. Adolf Hitler, Joseph Stalin, Karl Marx, and Gandhi. And um uh yeah, he would just he loved the influences that these people had and would spend hours at a community mm-hmm. library and bringing books home just to read them in the evenings. And um, he studied different, studied different political systems. And as you brought up, racial political view, views. Mm-hmm. And um, during uh, World War II, when that had started, he began, he um, developed more interest into the Nazi party. And uh, yeah, it was just crazy. And then there's a quote by him. This is, this is a third grade, third grader. Yeah, it's, it's wild. You ready for this? He goes, uh, commenting on his childhood, Jones stated, I was ready to kill by the end of third grade. I mean, I was so aggressive and hostile, I was ready to kill. Nobody gave me love, any understanding. In those days, a parent was supposed to go with a child to school functions. There was some kind of school performance, and everybody's parent was there but mine. I'm standing there alone always was alone and it was like all right so now you had this kid no guidance and now he's infiltrated a church church is and has the interest in adolf hitler joseph stalin Karl marx i mean death tolls by the millions yeah oh shit um that these people are responsible for and then uh Dude, even more stuff got in. It turned out Joan's father belonged to the Indiana branch of the Ku Klux Klan. And it's like, what the fuck? How bad could it get for this kid? Like, mm-hmm. honestly, I'm not putting any any um, sympathy towards him. But, oh, my God. No, but it, he started off already in a failing mode in life, right? Yeah. He, he was born into just a shithole, fucked up family. And like I said, like I felt like watching the documentary I watched, he had the right idea. Like he wanted to bring people together, but to, what happened during this time? <laughs> yeah, I think on the surface, because now, now that you mentioned, I might as well just say it now before I forget going through. Like you know how you mentioned, you know, it's obvious he tried to get people together, and get like-minded weak individuals i mean who joins a cult we'll talk that later we'll talk about that later but you know it was during times of jim crow Mm -hmm. and you know there was a lot of racial division yada 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 and i'm wondering if he was if on the surface you know it may seem his intentions were good but he saw these people that didn't belong like him and was a predator on that prey to go, come here. If you join here, everything's going to be fine. Everything will be good. I'll bring you to paradise. I'll look out for you the way the, you know, America's not looking out for you. It's good over here. Come on over and, and check it out. And I really think he used a lot of people's um, disadvantages or even, you know, during the time to a predatorily lure them in. Oh yeah, for sure. Where he wanted. For sure, yeah. So yeah, if you wanna you wanna keep rolling on it? Yeah, just yeah, just you you can keep going with we'll okay. comment as you go, you know. I read a lot on this. So. <laughs> <laughs> um so in early nineteen fifty two, uh Jones announced to his wife and his family that uh he's gonna become a Methodist minister and he wanted to use the church to push for Marxism, communism, and socialism. 
So now Which he's is, those sound lovely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So now he's infiltrated the church and he knows, he knows I can Trojan horse this into, you know, through through religion and anyone can make you know, people's faith when you start um manipulating people's faith. Mhm. Mm you're going to you're going to get a really strong hold on them. But um so uh when he started doing that, Jones was surprised when a Methodist district superintendent helped him get a start in the church, even though he knew Jones was to be a communist. And communists back in the day, dude, if you were openly saying you're a communist during that time in 1952, it's not going to work well for you at no. all. So I don't know if this pastor was like, oh, I could help him or, you know, whatever. I don't know. So... um. So yeah, like many of the attendees of the church, they um, they believed or indicated that he possessed some supernatural gift, and now that this uh, this Methodist district superintendent called uh, I don't know this guy's name Bram, Bram he endorsed yeah. him all the time. So more and more people started flowing in. Um, about eleven thousand people would uh, grow to form the People's Temple. So Jones was in particularly effective recruitment among the African-American attendees at the conventions. According to the newspaper report, regular attendance at People's Jones swelled to a 1,000 uh, thanks to publicly uh, Branham's provided to Jones and the People's Temple. So he has used the church to... He infiltrated the church for his political gain... And now I often wonder, like I just said, if he was using people of color as sh sheep. That's the right word? Without sounding, like, terrible. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so by the end of 1969, the People's Temple, it, dude, it's, it just kept growing. And Jones' message of economic socialism and racial equality um, – with the integrated nature of the People's Temple, it it provided a, an attractive outlook that many people were, you know, if they were lost, they're like, oh, you know, we uh we have some guidance over here, and a lot of it was students and racial minorities. So by 1970, uh, the temple opened branches in several cities across uh, San Fernando, San Francisco, Los Angeles. And do we know how California was back in the day? We know how California is now. Mm. If they're going to experiment in anything, they're going to experiment in it. You know, they're going to be rather uh, open. Um, so, a lot the headquarters was moved to San Francisco, which is a major center of radical protest movements. And by 1973, People's Temples reached 2,570 members, with 36,000 subscribers to the fundraising, the newsletter. So there's a lot of people. It's crazy how a hold fast he built this, though. And think about it. it. A lot of it's word of mouth. Yeah, that's all it was back then. There yeah. was no internet. You know, it's, I mean, even in the newspaper at this time, I think when he they moved to San Francisco, I don't think they were really big into the newspaper because when they moved to San Francisco, didn't he have uh, influence on the... Mayor Toil um, election was it for San Francisco? I think, I think there's I think something it was like that to where he, he started getting into the politics, and yeah. uh, lots of politicians wanted him around because he had such a big following yeah. that they wanted those votes. Well, he and was I'm pretty sure that it was the mayor. Uh, I, oh man, I, I, you'd have to look it up now. I'm pretty sure it was the mayor election. Uh, in San Francisco around that time, like 1973, 74, whatever. Wow. And, um, yeah, and that's, like, after that, that's when everything kind of started, you know. Picking that, up, that going up. up good. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, so crazy. Yeah. So then. So crazy. So as that temple was growing, Jones purposely started targeting other churches. In 1970, Jones and, like, a 100 50 of his followers. They took a trip to San Francisco, Missionary Baptist Church, 
And this is where it's like, oh boy, here we go. Um, Jones held a faith healing revival meeting wherein he impressed the crowd by claiming to heal a man of uh, cancer and helping him stage the healing at the end of the event. Uh, he began attacking and condemning Baptist teachings and encouraging mm -hmm. the members to abandon the church and join him. And I immediately think of those late night pastor, uh, I'll heal you, and he's just watching yeah. these people fall all over the place, and it's like, holy. Well, fuck, that's what he was man. doing. Yeah, like, he'd have he'd have people come up, and um, for for one instance, uh, there's a um, lady. He was like pointing at her. He's like, "Can you see me?" He had, she had glasses on. And she's yeah. like, yeah. She's like, I want you to take off your glasses. He's like, can you see me? She's like, not really. He's like, and then he does this little hand stuff, you know, and the, the power coming through me. And he goes, how many fingers am I holding up? And all of a sudden she's like, you're holding up one finger. I can see. And then everyone was like, oh, you know, and they like, you know, and then there was another one. And uh, this, this one was uh, found out, but this lady was in a wheelchair He's, he's like talking to her and he's like, I want you to stand up right now. I want you to stand up out of that chair. And she was like struggling, trying to stand up. And she finally stood up and he's like, come walk to me, walk to me. And she started walking and everyone's like mind blown now. Oh my God. You know, next thing you know, she's like running up and down the aisles and like come to find out that was an actor. Yeah. I planted yeah. her. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, obviously, right. But, um, everyone believed it. Everyone believed it, and it's like I'm sold. This dude's healing people. Uh, I think at one point he said he had cancer and got rid of his cancer. It, it's, it's, it's. I don't, I don't want to say it, but it's, it's weak-minded people. Yeah, just give into it. It's exactly you what know? I was gonna say. Like typically, I'd be like, you know what? I don't want to offend anyone. But when it's like to this level of Tom Foolery, <laughs> like, yeah. like to this level, I'm like, dude, fuck, like, was, and he like, he was for the people, like he he's like, I'll be your father if you don't if you were dude, raised without a father, I'll be your father, I'll be your brother. Snake. He's like, if you wanna um, pray to me, I'll be your Lord and Savior. I'll even be your God if you're willing to accept it. Like, and these people were like, okay, like they're all about it too. Wow. It was wild, the shit that he said, and people just, okay. Wow. I mean, and that's like many. what you're just saying, like Hitler, Stalin, and all of them. It's the same thing, right? They, they, yeah. They got into these people's heads, and it was like, this is the right thing to do. Yeah. Like, okay, yes, it is. It must be the right thing, right? Yeah. Like, it's so crazy, man. It is. Wild, it's wild. Fucking nuts. So the beginning of Jonestown, uh, by the summer of 1974, land and supplies were purchased in Guyana. Is it Guyana? Guyana. Guyana. Yeah, I actually been there, so. Oh, no shit. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he, Jones was put in charge for the project, and he oversaw the installation of all the you know power generation stations, the clearance of the fields for the farming, and the constructions of the dormitories, um, just to prepare for the first settlers. And uh, in December 1974, the first group arrived. Um, they started operating the commune that would uh, become known as Jonestown. Um, so Jones was there for, get it, Jonestown? <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'm God, trying to yeah. add some humor into this evil yeah. shit. It no. just I we keep we get closer and closer and I'm like oh fuck you so, know it's gonna happen yeah. yeah so Jones he ended up uh, he ended up leaving um, Jonestown and uh, so he could return to the United States to continue his efforts because he started getting some negative press uh, yeah after a while that was uh, people who left I think it was well there was a, there was a lot of um, people started talking. And uh, come to find out, he was, like, basically having sex with a lot of these, his followers, yeah. men and women. And uh, these people are starting to, like, like, wait, hold on. I thought he, you know, I thought it was only me type deal. And um, that's when everyone kind of started 
spreading out a little bit more amongst uh, these these tight group of the uh, followers and whatnot. And I think yeah. one of them leaked this crap out to the press. Yeah. And then New that's West when magazine. Yep. And that's when everything started to kind of tumble a little bit. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Physical, emotional, and sexual abuse. So. Yeah. So. Yeah, that was when after reading that article, that was when Jones knew like America's done, uh, and he took off to South Time America. To move on, yeah. Yeah, he started to compelling members of the People's Temple to make him make the move with him. Which even like even right there, like, are you not like, no, I'm not, I'm not going. Yeah, we got to leave tonight, South America. Yeah, like, mm. but a lot of them did, obviously. Yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he he promoted it uh, to the, as the community he called it a social para- a socialist paradise, and a sanctuary from the media scrutiny in San Francisco. Um, he established a model communist community, adding to the people's surprise, uh, compromise the purest the purest communists there are. So once they all arrived in Jonestown, Jones prevented members from leaving the settlement. Now yeah. people, you come in, you're there. Mm-hmm. They had armed guards. Stay there. Yeah. Yep. Yep. But the, so. at one point, the um, there was one guy who um, who's one of the survivors down there. He was saying like they pulled up to the um, the compound, not compound. I don't know what Jonestown. Which, um, and he said there's an armed guard out front of the the dirt path, and it's like it felt like a security, like you know, no yeah. one's coming Keeping in. Keeping people that, out. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's it's supposed to be just us in the sanctuary. And uh, he felt comfortable with that, not thinking it could have been something worse. Yeah. So. Yep. So then all entertainment was pretty much cut off. Mm -hmm. So they were pretty much have to watch Soviet propaganda shorts and documentaries on all of of American social problems. Because there were. There were a lot of problems. There still are some problems. But uh, when it's beaten in your head, we're seeing this now, when it's beating your head over and over and over and the conditioning and the conditioning and the conditioning. People just fall into it. Mm -hmm. Um, Then there was lessons of Soviet affiliations. um, And then there was alleged mercenaries dispatched by Tim Stowen, who had defected from the temple and turned against the group. Um, There was a, there was a, the topic of an adult midnight lectures and classroom discussions of Jones Discourses about the revolutionary and adversaries. Mm-hmm. So then we get in. So think more people are showing up. Obviously, people cannot leave. Uh, this when they start performing these white nights. I'm running into the jungle. I'm taking my freaking chances. So during this time, Jones started becoming paranoid. Um, he became fearful of a government raid on the commune. Um, it's, I mean, stuff has already gotten out before when it first started. So as it goes on, you know, things got worse. Um, a lot of people, Jones was so hard on it that uh, the community uh, was concerned that they would not be able to re- resist an attack. So Jones started holding drills to test their readiness. And he called yeah. the drills white knights um jones would call alert 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 over the community loudspeaker and everyone would come together and at, at the pavilion that's what it was called it was a pavilion at the center where they would have these town meetings these all these different activities at night mm-hmm. and so forth and so on they would work eight hour days but study for eight hours um sure, i so think they, it was longer than that there, some yeah. people are saying that they, they were up for days yeah that's so fucked up yeah, so they uh, so armed guards with guns and crossbows would surround the pavilion, and the community members would remain in the pavilion throughout the drill. Um, Jones would tell them that the community had been surrounded by agents who were about to destroy them. Like no one knows this is fake, mm-hmm. and uh, they started praying, chanting, singing to him, and uh, singing to him to try to ward off the attack, and. Um, at times, guards would hide in the forest and shoot their firearms to simulate an attack. So, can you imagine? Dude, this is conditioning. And uh, the followers were so terrified, um, uh, only to where they were participating in the drill, 
and that the event was over, one drill um, in September of 77, like, you, here you go, lasted for six days, known yeah. as the Six-Day Siege. His ordeal was used thereafter by Jones as a symbol of the community's spirit. Crazy. It's so fucked up. Um, and then this is where things start really sounding familiar. Uh, but they, they were just used to keep the fear alive. Keep the fear alive. Keep conditioning. Yeah, well, that's the that's the main thing, right? If you keep that fear up, they're going to yeah. listen to you. Right? Yep. And this and, and this is when people start like you know following. There were two visits by the United States Embassy personnel just to check in on the situation, just to see how things were going. Um, there was also an IRS investigation in seventy uh, eight, and Jones had became completely paranoid that he goes an attack's gonna happen it's gonna happen yeah we're done so in 78 he held a white knight drill and he told his followers he was going to distribute a poison that everyone was to drink for an act of suicide and uh he served up the fruit punch um that everyone was given everyone was crying and waiting for death and after a while no one was dying and then he informed his his followers, like, no, this was just a test of your loyalty. There's yeah. no poison in this Kool-Aid. Um, I'm going to bring up the loyalty thing in a little bit, too. Sure. Yeah. Um, I'm, just, I'm just waiting for the right time, actually. Yeah. So. You, yeah, stop me whenever. Yep. So on at least two of the occasions of these, uh, of these white knights... Um, they would call it a, uh, they had a revolutionary suicide vote was reached and uh, simulated mass suicide was rehearsed. They were rehearsing this. It's ridiculous. And um, a temple defector named Deborah Layton described the event as uh, just awful. Everyone, including the children, was told to line up. Uh, as they passed through the line, they were given a small glass of red liquid to drink. Uh, and they were told that the liquid contained poison and that we would die within 45 minutes. And um, they would just all do, they were all, they all did what they were told. And at the time, uh, they should have dropped dead. He explained to them once again, the poison was not real. And that we've been put through another loyalty test. And he warned us the time was not far off when it would become necessary for us to die by their own hands. Mm-hmm. So these guys are just keep doing it, just do it. Yeah. Like, look, he's conditioning them to uh, till that day, <laughs> whatever. And was it November eleventh or something like that? The beginning of the end. Gosh, what was it? Eighteen, November eighteenth. Eighteenth, okay. Yeah. So this is where. Uh, well, this is when. So some of the people who um, got out of. The actual um, compound, no, um, Paradise. The, 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 whatever. I'm, I'm trying to think how how to say it. They never flew down, so they're still in, the, in America, and um, these people are like, uh, "We're done." We they opted out of the whole thing, and uh, they're trying to get their family back. And this is when they started getting Congress involved to like get these people back home. You know, because they, they're they're talking to them. Uh, on uh, handheld radios and stuff, they're like family, like fine. come on down here, please. You know, like they're trying to get their family members back in and um, whatnot, and they're like, no, it's like you don't understand, like the stuff that they're saying here. You know, he's a bad dude and all this, and then they'll just come back. That's what they want you to think. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. he's so successful and all this, they want you to think he's a bad guy. And mm -hmm. it's like they're, they're already brainwashed. Like they're, it's like no, no, no. You know. Yeah. It's like I felt horrible for these people. Yeah. Well, who knows what's standing that who's standing next to him on that radio too. Yeah. You know. Yeah, right. You know. Like no, yeah. you're gonna be saying this, right? No. Yeah. Tell him to come on down. Yeah. Yep. Sure. I'm pretty sure those are monitored. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah. Fuck yeah. So, this is the beginning of the end for for Jonestown. Um, it started to deteriorate. The community was just flat out exhausted and overworked. As time went on, you know, more and more needed to be done. Um, they were performing manual labor. It, it, it just communism. 
I'm sorry. Yeah. It looks fantastic on paper. Don't, don't, <laughs> yeah. It doesn't work. It's a great time. It does not work. Yeah, yeah. So um, then loudspeakers were installed around Jonestown, and sermons were played constantly mm-hmm. throughout the entire community. So this is all you hear is this asshole yeah. just spouting they, all this. They're saying it, they'd be like miles away collecting like fruit and stuff. They can, they, they can still hear it over oh, the loudspeakers. Wow. Miles away. But that's when he was saying a lot of uh, false information about America. You know, they want sh- they want to kill all the old people. You know, they want yeah. that racial divide. They want this and that. And it's just saying, like, you know what? No, we're going to stay down here. Screw screw them. You know, we don't want to go yeah. back home. I got to get my family down here. I want them to have the life and paradise. You know, that's what they're saying. Is all. Yeah. So then uh, you're, you're mentioning, like, people on these two-way radios talking mm. about it. Well, a congressman... Ryan, um, he called it a fact-finding mission. Like, no, nah, let's let's go down there and, and see exactly yeah. what the hell, what's going on, you know, in front of us. Um, he delegated with a bunch of relatives of the Temple members, uh, and NBC camera crew went down there with them, and uh, a couple of reporters from from several newspapers, and uh, they ended up arriving down there on November fifteenth. So two days later, they traveled by plane to Port Katamua, Katuma, Katuma, Katuma. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, sure. Why not? Why not? <laughs> and uh, they were transported to Jonestown, um, where Jones hosted a pretty much a reception, welcoming them uh, for the delegation that evening at the Central Pavilion. It's always back at that pavilion, and yeah. during which the Temple member, a uh, Temple member, Vernon. Gosney passed a note, and um, this is where it's really fucking scary. This was scary, because when he tried to pass the note, I don't have it written down here. I watched it. Oh, I know, I know this. Yeah, he dropped it. He dropped it, and he's like, "Oh, sir, you you dropped this." Yeah, and he the picked it back up. Kid, and the little kid was like, "He's passing a note. He's passing a note." And then everyone was like, "Huh, oh, you know." Yeah, he got like, up and on. Happening, yeah. Do you know how scary that could have been? Like once that, Shh. like invasion of the body snatcher style. Rah, That's you know, exactly what I was saying. yeah, like oh, oh my, my god. god. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so he tried to pass note, like yeah, like you said, the kid um tried pointing him out. I lost exactly where the hell I was yeah. here. Oh, you see, the, so the basically the note said we need help. Yeah, we no, need like, assistance. We we don't want to be here anymore. And they, they couldn't do it on the handheld radio. They couldn't leave the uh, sanctuary. Yeah. So it's like there was no way to actually get this information out. Yeah, there's a group that wanted to leave. Um, so then they, they were like, we got to go. And that was brought up to Jim. It was like, they're saying they can't leave. And he's, oh, no, no, they're free to go. They're free. That's fine. No problem. Mm-hmm. You know, so in a hurry, they were like, this is November 18th. Like, Ryan was like, we got to get out of here. Something's wrong. And uh, he was almost stabbed by one of the temple members, Don Sly. He said he, and, he was going to kill him. Yeah. And uh, that was when they were just like, they took 15 of the temple members who expressed a desire to leave. And Jones was at first made no attempt. So he's fine. And, uh, you know, he didn't prevent their their departure, and I forgot the guy's name. But they said one of them, one of the fifteen, they were like, "Wow, why does he want to leave? He has always been like big, strong on the temple, and so yeah. they always saw like this guy was the odd man, um, was the odd man out of the entire group. So, um. So, yeah, they left, and then uh, Marshall and Jones announced on the public address system that uh, everything was fine. He urged the locals to go back to their uh, houses. And um, during this time, uh, they started preparing a large bath. Well, what would you say? A large uh, metal tub yeah. full of grape Kool-Aid. Grape flavor Kool-Aid. And stick with me here because I'm going to butcher all these. Uh, this is why I need my wife now. She yeah, call her up right real quick. <laughs> How do you pronounce? It's D I P. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
diphenhydramine. <laughs> I know a this bunch one. of long words. <laughs> yeah, promethazine, yeah. Uh, chlorpromazine, chloroquine, uh, chloral hydrate, diazepam, diazepam and, and you know I don't know I'm why saying, you need anything else. Well, of here you could have just had the last one. Yeah, cyanide. And, <laughs> yeah. And the the funny thing, I mean, it's not funny, but when they were mixing this batch up, the um uh one of the survivors w- was saying like they're whoever was mixing it was like, "Can we add more flavor because it has a real bitter taste?" Oh my god. Like, okay. <laughs> it's add some more grape Kool-Aid, I guess, yeah. right? Like, hey, Phil, it tastes kind of chalky. You want to add yeah, some more sugar there's some in there? Kind, there's something like an iron taste or something. Yeah. I don't know. Here, sip this spoon real quick. Let me know how it tastes. Yeah. <laughs> it needs more Kool-Aid. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the cyanide's really coming through on yeah. this one. Yeah, it's starting to melt my tongue. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, she'll see it later, Clark. Her eyes are frozen. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm sorry. I feel like uh, this is our defense mechanism coming uh, up. Like, because this just is going to be so cause terrible. Because you know what, yeah. It's this is going to be, be horrible. so bad. So this is our, this is literally our, God, can you add flavor? Jeez, we'll cry. Yeah. Man. She said it was just too bitter. <laughs> we need to add more how flavor. Do you, how do you flavor taste test that? Well, they just, ooh, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Add more, add more of that, you know. Yeah. Like it was. That's what. That's what she was saying. She's like, she was so concerned on the taste. I was like, oh what? Yeah. Like what? I don't want to wake up with some bad morning breath. Can we just yeah. add a little bit of? That's messed up. But I mean, god damn, oh, man. My goodness. So. All I right. I completely so, missed my uh, my mark to tell you about the loyalty thing. But let's finish this out, and then I'll bring it up. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> So as the members of the you know the uh, Congressman Ryan's delegation, they boarded two planes uh, mm-hmm. at the at the port airstrip, and uh, Jonestown's Red Brigade of armed guards arrived and began just shooting them up. Yeah. All of a sudden, you know they let them go and they're like, "Nope, we gotta gotta go kill them." Now, there was two them. survivors of that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yep. They were found like laying like yeah. yeah. The government found them at the port. Yeah. Um, the gunman had killed Ryan and four other uh, new, four others near the airways. Um, at the same time, one of the supposed effectives, this is the guy, sorry, Larry La- uh, Layton, he drew a weapon and began firing at members inside the plane. So he was already inside the plane with a gun, and they had no idea. And one of the cameramen was able to capture the footage, seen the before, footage he yeah. was, before he was killed, and it was like, dude. So... Uh, wow. Five were ended up being killed. Uh, Ryan Harris Brown, um, San Francisco uh, examiner photographer Greg Robinson, and a Temple member uh, Patricia Parks. Oh, here we go. Yeah, surviving the attacks were Congresswoman Jackie Spear, future Congresswoman. Yeah, yeah, and then, uh, that's one of them. Yeah, yeah, Richard Dwyer. The, yep, and um, Bob Flick, the NBC producer, Steve. So Sun, there is more than uh, quite a few. Tim they Ritterman. actually said because I've heard they, I heard there was only two, so yeah, they, maybe they're get, they're actually getting into more of it. So yeah, here this is it. This is where it says right here they escaped into the jungle to avoid being killed. So oh, maybe that's maybe they, they're the the two that were amongst the rest of them that got killed. They maybe they survived there and the rest kind of booked into the jungle. Yeah, that's probably what happened. Yeah, wow, crazy, crazy, crazy. So this is where it's gonna get real bad. Um. The security guards ended up, or the armed guards showed up back at the camp, and you know pretty much he he told Jones like, hey, we killed Ryan, but a lot of them got away, and that was what Jones knew right away. Um, we're fucked. Yeah, we're screwed. The United States is gonna get wind of this, and they're gonna come down and they're gonna seize the town, and uh, you know he was pretty much telling them like genocide was was gonna happen, so mm-hmm. he called the whole community to the central pavilion and he pretty much he told them you know ryan is dead and now it's an only matter of time for the military comes down and they're going to kill us all they're going to kill us all by uh they're going to kill the children like something that probably like over the top 
murder of children, yada, yada, yada. So he pretty much said, like, let's have your children die in peace. And, you know, we'll, we'll go through this, you know, this transition. Um, Dude, it was horrible. Yeah. I mean, so I, he, I was watching, like, the videos and stuff on just people just filming the everyday life down there. And there's so many kids, dude. Yeah. So many little kids running around having fun, have no yeah. idea. No idea. Yeah. And a lot of them started getting second thoughts like, well, hey, we could defect to Russia. And yeah. Jones oh, yeah. There's them, a lot of video of that, too. Yeah. And uh, he told him, he's like, no, not after what happened at the airstrip. So he pretty much, he's trapping these people. He's not even trying. He's like, no, what happened at the airstrip, which was their fault, mm -hmm. um, who's going to want us now? We have this stigma. And um, so they were going to, uh, so they all got together and they're going to commit revolutionary suicide. Um, and the whole damn thing was recorded on an audio tape. It's actually called the yeah. death tape. Yep. I listened I, to the majority of it. Yeah, it is one of the worst things I've ever fucking heard in my life. Um, but, uh, yeah, so he recorded it. Uh, one Temple member, Christine Miller, descended toward the beginning of the tape. Uh, you can hear uh, cries and screams of children and adults. Uh, it'll be easily heard. Um, but, yeah, they would they, the, the whole uh, the compound would, would receive. This is where this guy was sneaky. He was a piece of shit. The, the way he would get this cyanide is he, he, he Jones obtained a jeweler's license to uh, to buy the chemical to clean gold. That's what these people that were sending the cyanide out thought he was doing. It was using the cyanide to clean gold. Um, so uh, earlier in May, you know, a temple doctor wrote a memo to Jones asking permission to wow. test the cyanide on pigs because our metabolism is very similar to that mm -hmm. of of humans and um the drink mixture of the flavor the flavor aid and cyanide was handed out to the members of the community to drink um and what's even worse is there were members that refused they're like no we're, you know we don't want to do this and when they refused they were injected and a lot of yeah. bodies were found with needle punctures in their skin a lot of them children um you know, you know, and adults. So even there's no way out. Um, the crowd was completely surrounded by armed guards, and uh, it was just death by poison or death by the guard's hand. You choose. Um, Ruletta Paul and her one-year-old were the first to consume the poison, according to the Escape Temple member Odell Rhodes. And uh, the child's mouth was filled with poison using a syringe without a needle, and uh, Paul then injected more poison into her own mouth. And uh, according to Rhodes, after ingesting the poison, people were taken down a wooden walkway that led outside the pavilion. Um, parents would watch their children perish from the poison. Unbelievable. Um, Rhodes described the scene uh, described the scene as like panic and confusion. Um, he added, uh, many of the temple members assembled, walked around like they were in a trance. And that the majority quietly waited their own turn to die. Uh, over time, as more temples members perished, the guards themselves were called in to die by the poison. Um, Dude. Yeah, it was not clear. They weren't clear if, if a lot of them thought it was a white knight rehearsal. Yeah, well, they probably did. They might they, have. They had so many to where they're like, ah, it's just going to be another, another day. Yeah. Yep, and Until then they uh, started fucking having seizures and shit and dying. Yeah, yeah. When people, yeah, when the members were weeping um, and showing signs of dissent, uh, Jones consoled them, and these are his words. He'd say, "Stop these hysterics! This is not the way for people who are socialists or communists to die. No way for us to die. We must die with some dignity." Uh, he also says, "Don't be afraid to die." Just stepping over into another plane and adding to death is a friend. And Jones directed the children to be killed first. Then the other adults poison themselves after the children have died. And at the end of the tape, Jones concludes, We didn't commit suicide. We committed an act of revolutionary suicide, protesting the conditions of it 
inhumane world. Dude. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, that was Yeah, a they heavy. uh they had one of the survivors, he was during all the panic when actually people started to die and they're realizing that this is real poison. Um he was so like out of it, like looking around and everything, he was saying that he found his wife and as he was looking at his wife, she was injecting their little baby, their newborn, oh. with the poison. And he ran over there, and it was already too late. The baby ingested it all. And then as he looked back at her, she's slamming the Kool-Aid. And he's like, what are you doing? He's like, this is not how it's supposed to end, you know. And and uh, he was one of the ones who escaped after they both passed. He's like, I watched my wife and uh, I think it was daughter die in my arms. And after they died, he took off. When he ran through the, the jungle, and he's oh. one of the survivors. Can you imagine that? No. And he's the one who was like, kind of like on the the ledge, like ah, I don't think I'm gonna do this no more. This ain't something's wrong. Like he was yeah. kind of finally coming to. Wow, yeah. wow. I think there's only a total of like eight people, if I remember right, during the Kool Aid that didn't take it or got away. Now, there's a whole big group of people who were somewhere else that day collecting whatever yeah, resources and whatnot. 85 members. Okay. Yeah. I was like, I know it was a big number, but there was only like, um, I think there was only like eight people that escaped during the panic. Yeah. There was a, an episode here um, in, the, in the early evening on a temple member named Sharon Amos in Georgetown, she received a radio message from George from Jonestown. So she's in Georgetown. She mm. receives a message from Jonestown telling the members there to exact vengeance on the temple's foes before committing revolutionary suicide. So now they're trying to reach out on other branches to tell them, yeah. like, no, now's the time. And um, the police arrived there, and Sharon escorted her children, their names Leanne, Krista and Martin into the bathroom and wielding a kitchen knife. Karen first killed one of her kids, Krista, and then Martin. Uh, then Leanne assisted Sharon in cutting her own throat after which Leanne killed herself. Unbelievable. So this even branched out from jo from Jonestown. Um, so yeah, 85 members of the community survived the event. Um, some slipped into the jungle as the death ritual began. Uh, one guy hid in the ditch. An elderly woman. This was crazy. This was crazy. I heard about this a long time ago. She was sleeping in her dormitory, and she slept through the whole thing. Oh, no way. She awoke and found wow. everyone dead. Wow. Um, yeah, and so, like, uh, high-ranking temple members were given an assignment to transfer the People's Temple's funds to the Soviet embassy. Um which they escaped death by doing so. Uh, the Jonestown basketball team was away at a game and survived. Can you imagine that? <laughs> what the hell? Yeah. Yeah, we won. I can't wait to tell the others. Uh, <laughs> that was fucked up. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Damn, dude. Yeah. Damn. All right. Man, we're going to drink some Gatorade when we get back. I just hope it ain't the purple kind. I hate the purple stuff. Oh, no. Okay, <laughs> so others uh, others hid in the dormitories or were away from the community on business when the death ritual unfolded. So Survivor Tim Carter has suggested that. His previous practice, that day's lunch of grilled cheese sandwiches may have been tainted with sedatives to subdue some of the members. Wow. So some of them may be, you know, oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, just crazy. So the mass murder-suicide result in the deaths of 909 inhabitants. Unbelievable. 276 of them were children. Ugh. God um, damn it. The, they were mostly found in the Central Pavilion. This resulted in the greatest single loss of American civilian life in a deliberate act. Until 9-11. Wow. Yeah. Um, I would highly, highly do not listen to that death tape. 
That was the yeah. Worst. It's rough to hear, dude. It's it's everywhere too. It's so easy to get to. I remember I got curious one day, and I skipped ahead. I listened to fifteen seconds and turned it off. And that was fifteen seconds. I hear. I could still hear it. I hear it too in my head. Like I said, I, I listened to a lot of it because um, I I wanted to know more. You know, I knew a good amount, yeah. but I wanted to know more. So you know yeah. to do the research and watch these documentaries and yeah. all this crap and then you you do it comes up randomly in on yeah. these and uh you're kind of forced to listen to some of it but yeah so um the loyalty thing you're saying uh, you know he had the loudspeaker in he he put over all the sermons and false information about the United States uh-huh. he would do these um he it got around to people like trying to convince people like, let's opt out, let's go home, you know, like that. Well, he would do these, I'm sending people out into the community to basically persuade you to leave. And it's your job to report them right away to show me how loyal you are. So these people thinking like, oh, this is the test. Here he is. This is the one who's telling me this stuff, you know? So they basically thinking like it's a test, but they're ratting out these people who actually are trying to get out. Wow. Yeah. So he said there was people like would um, do this and then you wouldn't see them anymore. So obviously wow. they're killing all these people off, the ones who actually wanted to leave. One who by got one. Reported. Yeah. But I was like, holy crap. What, like the idea of that, you know, like, well, we're going to just play the game and like, no, I'm sending people out. Show me how loyal you are. Show me, you know, like, tell me the guys who are doing this, and then you'll be rewarded type deal. Like, oh, yeah, it's just a test. No, it's not. Crazy, ain't that? Holy yeah. hell, man. And then just to find out, we should, we should probably cover this, too. After The aftermath, uh, the military, the Guineas military, they went to Jonestown, found them all dead. Um, they had to organize the airlift. There were so many people dead they had to put multiple people in individual coffins wooden coffins crates whatever you want to call them and jones was found dead on stage um on the pavilion um pretty much resting on a pillow and he had a gunshot wound to his head no one's necessarily sure if he killed himself or persuaded another member to kill him um yeah, but he had a high, a lot of a, a high level of uh, barbiturate, uh, barbiturates. I'm just gonna say that. Yeah. Um, but it would have been lethal for a lot of people like you and I. But he had such a high freaking tolerance from abusing these drugs over the years that it didn't kill him. So they ended up yeah. he ended up shooting himself. That's for sure. Wow. <sighs> so yeah. So now you know a good amount obviously there's a lot more to everything but it's fucked up yeah right <laughs> and like i said it's probably going to make you go ooh whenever you hear uh drink the Kool-Aid yeah no i'm drinking the Kool-Aid like mm, mm. like damn dude no nah, don't drink that Kool-Aid man ugh yeah it's sick yeah it is very S- sick some sick shit so yeah, I mean, gosh, we kind of answered the question. I, you know, we ended up skipping from the beginning. You know, what makes a person join a cult? And I think we answered it like nine times. It's actually eleven, here. but yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, my bad. Yeah, dude, just no. Me. Like I was, I was thinking about this too. Like, like what, what you have to do, like what they have to do to persuade them, right? Like. So you, you'd have to create some type of message. And yeah. he, he had the platform being a, um, being in the religion, you know, what is he, a priest or, uh, no, he's a sermon minister. Pastor, so I can't remember, yeah. So, I mean, he just started spewing that. Pick an enemy. That's United States, right? United States was against everybody. And then uh, celebrate and you know, make everybody feel happy warm and joy that's why they did everything all the fundraisers everyone was like a family everyone came together you know yeah and uh yeah dude it was wild though wild just to go to that 
just to go to that extent. Dude, if, if a motherfucker ever sat there and was like, yeah, it's time to die, we're going to drink this Kool-Aid. No. What the fuck? Yeah. You know, like, what is that? I just, I don't know how that wasn't like, I don't even want to call that a red flag. <laughs> like, I just feel like, oh, I'm getting the fuck out of here. But then again, you got all those armed guards, and I think I'd rather die on my feet fighting than... Actually, that guy I was telling you that he uh, seen his... Uh... Wife kill his daughter, you know, watching yeah. the cast. He said that um, the guards would surround them, all of them. And he was like, where did all these guns come from? Because he they, they've never seen the guns right. throughout the, the sanctuary, except at the front gate, and thinking that was the protection, you know, we don't want yeah. people coming in. But he's like, they never seen the guns. Wow. It's like, where the heck did they keep them? Obviously, they had an armory or something. Yeah. It's like... We, we mentioned at the beginning, it's like all those people were the cats that mm-hmm. he had to perform rituals yeah. for after he killed them. Oh, shit. So, yeah, go full circle right there. Good God. Damn, dude. Yeah, this is a this is a sick true crime story. Yeah. Hope you guys yeah. enjoyed it. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's all I got to say about that. Um, should we talk about the next episode? Yeah, yeah, let's let's give a sneak yeah, peek. Yeah, we have a little lighthearted topic. Um, I came across, like, a list on, on one website where people, some people, uh, someone did, like, a best and worst uh, list, and I was like, man, I'd like to nerd out, give this little hard shit a break and nerd out and do a best and worst throughout the, the Batman film franchise. And go through. I thought that'd be a lot of fun. Um, yeah, it's probably gonna be yeah, a longer gonna, episode too. Yeah, it's gonna be a long <laughs> episode. And uh, I got, I'm gonna lay a ground rule right now. The only animated movie that we're gonna include is Mask of the Phantasm. Correct. And there's quite a bit of animated movies. Yeah, there are. But that's why I, I was sitting there. Up. I was like, I was like, man. But then that had actually had a theatrical release. Mm-hmm. And it's so damn good. I was like, man, I, I really want to include this because. We were talking about like the best and worst. I was like, "How do I not add Kevin Conroy into that?" Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, how do you just you have exclude to. him? Yeah, yeah. we have no to. Way you can exclude him? Oh, he was he was there for so long for us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, do you ever hear the nine eleven story about him? I don't think so. God, I want to say. I hope I get this right. I know it happened. I just got to figure out where. But after nine eleven, he was working at a fire station. And he was talking, and like, oh, what do you do? And he's, he's like, oh, I, I voice Batman. And the guy's like, <laughs> prove it. And he goes, I am Batman. And, you know, said it in his, in his you know, trademarked voice. Yeah. And the guy was like, oh, it's Batman. <laughs> and they were, like, thought it was like, they thought no it was way. so cool. And he said it was really cool to get, like, um, a sense of, like, not hope, but, like, ba- back to normalcy. You yeah, know, yeah. after nine eleven, because it you know it took a long time. I'll have to find that clip. That was that's cool. It was really cool to hear that story. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, so well, all right. Well, Brandon, that's all I got for that. Yeah, let's let's do this. All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I like to welcome. I should have said I like to welcome all the new uh, subscribers on on YouTube. All eight hundred, nine hundred new subscribers. Yeah. After that Ted Two shit, holy cow! So, um, start listening on the podcast on the. Uh, if you guys can't do the YouTube thing, totally understand. But get on Spotify. Get on. We're on everything. So yep. if you actually go to the YouTube page at the banner, I have a bunch of the um, logos up there that you know different platforms. We're on the major ones, you know, uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio. iHeartRadio actually is doing the best so far really out of all of the uh, platforms spotify is uh second and then uh it was google podcast but now it is youtube music uh which i had a listener ask about he said uh they stopped doing google podcasts and i looked it up Uh and come to find out it is youtube music now um so youtube music is coming up on the list of downloads that I've seen, but yeah, iHeartRadio, dude, they're 
they're uh, they're pulling them. Oh, so. shit. All right, cool. You have Podbean, Podbean as well, and then, like I said, all the other logos to the different um, channels and or uh, platforms and whatnot. You can for show, for show. do what you need to do. So. All right, guys. Like, share, subscribe, help us grow. Uh, Facebook, yeah. YouTube, X, Instagram, and all podcast platforms. Yep. All right. Till next time, my friends. See you later.